Welcome to the Open Dental New Crop webinar. New Crop, uh, formerly known as Legacy, is an electronic prescription service that is integrated with Open Dental. And they have released a new update that is bringing some changes to the interface as well as some new features. We're going to be covering those today as well as just going through the process for creating and sending a prescription so that you guys can be familiar with that process uh, once you get your hands on this new interface. Before we get into that, let's take a look at some of the initial requirements here. Um, for starters, Open Dental version 21.2 and above is required in order to use the service. Microsoft Edge is also required to use this service. Uh, an office will need to be on support in order to sign up for the service. And offices can use New Crop uh, as well as DoSpot, which is another ERX service that Open Dental is integrated with in the same office at the same time, should that be needed. Uh, the sign-up process for Legacy is fairly straightforward. The office will need to schedule 30 minutes of uninterrupted provider time to work with an Open Dental technician to go through the identity proofing process. Uh, the doctor will need to be present for the entirety of that appointment. If an appointment time does not work, doctors can also call in um, whenever they are available to proceed with that process as well. The fees for this service are listed on the web manual. Uh, there is an EPCS yearly fee that is paid directly to New Crop, and that is, again, just for the ability to send controlled substances. Uh, again, if you'd like to see those updated prices, they will be on our website. So let's take a look at the legacy interface here. We're gonna see some changes immediately just to how it looks. Let's go ahead and launch this here. We're gonna go click on ERX. And the first thing that I wanna to bring to your attention here is going to be in the problems tab. Um, again, some of the navigation is going to be a little different, but more or less the process for some of the existing features will remain the same. But we're gonna go select problems here in the top toolbar. And what this will give us the ability to do is add allergies for the patient that we have selected. We can see I have ERX patient selected here and the patient section is going to have a date of birth and the rest of their patient demographic information here as well. To add an allergy, I can simply click add and it's going to allow me to search the database of allergies. I can also select common allergies to add those as well. From here, we also have the ability to view diagnosis codes. If they have a completed procedure in Open Dental that has an ICD-10 code attached, those will be visible here. One of the things that we really like about this new update is the ability to add and manage pharmacies in a much easier way. Um, I can even see from here, actually, we have the ability from the Problems tab to manage existing pharmacies and add new pharmacies, so they can be selected from here. Uh, they are also available from every other tab aside from the admin tab and the help button, which isn't actually a tab in and of itself. But as I go through each one of these tabs, I can see the pharmacy dropdown is available under each one of these, as well as the doctor and health plan dropdowns. The compose tab is where we're more often than not going to be starting and also doing a majority of the work. Um, and also from here, obviously, we do have the ability to select or add a new pharmacy. Um, if you would like to manage the pharmacy list, there is the ability to do that under the admin tab. Under list maintenance, there's a location pharmacies. And then this will allow us to add to this pharmacy list here. And again, it'll just be a search based off of name, phone number, address, same information as before. Uh, but this will allow you to manage these separately from uh, actually writing and sending a prescription. The same thing is still true when sending a prescription. If you don't have the pharmacy selected ahead of time or you need to change it before we get to the point of sending, once we get towards the end here, you will see uh, see that you still have the ability to select a pharmacy before we actually transmit the prescription to the pharmacy. 
So as we move on to how to actually create a prescription, we will see that once again, we have our patient selected here, ERX patient. We have our provider under this doctor dropdown. It's currently grayed out for us, and that's because in Open Dental, we are currently logged in under this provider here. If we were to be logged in under a different provider, we would see that provider's name here. If we were logged in under a proxy user, we would have the ability to change the drop down here to a separate provider. However, the default provider here uh, that would show is typically going to be the provider that is set as the primary provider for that patient inside of Open Dental. When adding a prescription, we have a few ways to go about this. Um, as per usual, we can search for a medication uh, using the drug search field. We'll use amoxicillin as our example. Um, we can start with just adding a few of the letters here, and then I can hit drug search, and it's going to give us the results based off of what we would have entered in. And then I can expand this amoxicillin search and then pick the required dosage and amounts and then fill in my script from here. Another way of adding prescriptions and managing them uh, would be from the provider favorites list. This is another thing that's had a very welcome change. Um, I can simply select a favorite by clicking the drop down. I can also add a new favorite by clicking the drop down and hitting add favorite. If I click the favorites button, it will just drop down the favorites list for the provider that we are logged in as. And what we would be currently looking at here are favorites that we have already previously created ahead of time. The nice thing with the favorites list now is that we don't actually need to create a prescription, save it as a favorite, and then delete it in order for it to appear on the favorites list. As previously mentioned, I can just hit the drop down and click add favorite, and that'll take me straight to a list where I can do the same thing essentially here, search for my medication, if it were amoxicillin, and then fill it out as if I were going to be prescribing, but just filling out my script information and then saving it. Makes it much easier to manage and create the favorites. Now that we're back here at this main screen, uh, again, we're gonna roll with our amoxicillin. We're gonna click drug search, amoxicillin. And then let's say we wanna just do our 250 milligram capsule. We'll click on that guy. Same thing here, we would fill out the script as needed. And then any additional sig notes would be added here. I'm just going to put a test note in. One difference that we would have from this screen that we previously wouldn't have is technically still the ability to add this to a favorite. So if you do kind of during that flow when I add it as a favorite, but didn't previously create it ahead of time or managing it from that favorites list, you would still have the ability to do so here. Um, as you would in the previous version of new crop. But now what we have is the ability to queue the RX, delete it, or hit prescribe to take us straight to the transmit and prescribe window. For now, I'm just going to queue up this prescription. and that will take us back to the Compose page. This is more similar to what we would expect to see previously, uh, where it'll take you back here, and then you can choose to prescribe from this window. Again, clicking the Prescribe button in the actual window itself will allow you to go straight to prescribing. We're gonna go ahead and go straight to prescribing here instead of queuing. So I'm gonna click on the Prescribe button. And this will take you to your page where you would then approve and send um, your medications. The provider is the only user that has the ability to approve and send controlled substances. Non-providers are allowed to send non-controlled substances in Nucrop. 
From this window, we can still select a pharmacy or search for a pharmacy. So again, if this was not selected ahead of time, we can change it here. Right now it would go to this Walgreens listed here. If I wanted to change the pharmacy, I would simply select from our list down below. From here, since this is a non-controlled substance, I would just click transmit and this would send it to the pharmacy. If this were a controlled substance, we would still follow the same process. However, we would be prompted for some additional credentialing here, which would be the provider's four digit PIN, as well as a six digit code that would come as part of the two factor authentication for sending controlled substances. If we were to go back to our compose page here, we would have the ability to view any active or discontinued medications for the patient we have selected. For now, we don't have any active medications because this amoxicillin has not actually been sent to the pharmacy, but we would have the ability to see those here. If there are any discontinued medications, we can hit the drop down here. We're gonna see that there's a few for our test patient, but this is where we would be able to manage those. One more thing that I wanna show in regards to the prescription itself, once we get to the transmit page, is when we are in here, there are some other options. Should we not necessarily need to transmit this immediately, we would be able to leave for staff. If this were a controlled substance, this would say leave for doctor, and that would just allow them to come back and approve and send that substance and would keep it in a pending status. Printing would print the prescription. And then record would add this as a patient reported medication. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. And in this case, now we can see what an active medication would look like. If needed, we do have the ability to edit prescriptions as well. This one, in this case, has already been dispensed, so it would need to be requeued in order to change that. But this would pull up a window in order to allow us to edit the medications. And in that same dropdown, we would have the ability to replace, discontinue, or view the details for this prescription. The detail tab is going to look something like this where we'll have the prescription details, the prescriber, the patient, the medication, as well as the prescription history. One more thing I'd like to mention about the favorites list is when managing the favorites list, we'll actually go here to our pharmacy and let's say, start right here and one more thing that I would like to mention about the favorites list is when managing the favorites if I were to go to add a new favorite in the drop down here I would also see the ability to copy from and to other providers so should we ever need to copy a list from one provider to another I would have the ability to do so One of the other newer features that we are a big fan of over here would be the compounds section. So in order to add a compound and medication, we would just hit the drop down or click on the button itself to pull up this list. And as we can see, we have a couple of test compounds in here. We would always suggest looking for existing compounds before creating one. Uh, a fairly common example would be something along the lines of an acetaminophen codeine. Uh, so always try a generic version. And then if that doesn't exist, we do have the ability to create compounds in here. So we would just click on new compound. We would be able to label the compound and then we can go through and add all the individual ingredients, a quantity, a unit, and then any SIG information as well. In that same vein, on the Compose page, we do have the drug sets. Same thing, I can click on the button or click on the drop down and add a drug set.
And what a drug set would allow us to do is create a bundle of prescriptions that are usually sent together. So some examples we have here would be for pre-surgery. If we know that for a specific type of appointment or procedure that X and Y medications are always sent at the same time, instead of having to go through and add each one of those individually, we can add a drug set. We'll add a new name in here. And then I can add or remove certain medications. So again, if I were to roll with my amoxicillin example, we would just go add in our prescription information, fill out our signature, add to the set, and continue to do that for whichever other medications would need to be included in here. This would give you the ability to click and add one of these to add multiple medications in just one click. We're gonna show that off for you here. Let's add another medication to our test list so we can kind of see it at work. We're just going to grab something random from this list here. We're going to add it to the drug set. And now we would technically have these two things here. And if composing, I would hit drug sets and it would give me the drop down of the drug sets. I can technically select individual medications from that drug set. or I can select the entire set itself by clicking this radial button here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick our test and I can prescribe. And again, clicking on this prescribe button is going to take us straight to the page to actually transmit and prescribe this. The dropdown would allow you to queue that up as well should you not need to send it straight away. And one of the last things that I will show you guys here is this tasks option in the top right tucked away. This would allow us to manage a few things such as renewal requests, pharmacy change requests, and also be able to see unsent and failed prescriptions. So as we can scroll through here, we'd be able to see all of our unsent prescriptions that we've been playing around with here thus far. Um, there are no pharmacy renewal or change requests available for us, and we currently have no failed prescriptions. But this would allow us to manage those should we need to. I can also filter this list by prescriber or location, or even do a patient search. If there are any issues with a prescribed medication, we can view this details tab and report a missing script. As always, if you need any help with this, you can contact Open Dental Support and we're more than happy to assist with any issues that you may come across with prescribed medications. Thanks again for viewing the Open Dental New Crop webinar. Again, New Crop, formerly known as Legacy. And if you have any questions, you can always direct those again to Open Dental Support. And you can view some of the links down in the description below for more information. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. If you have additional questions, please call our support line at 503-363. 5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com. And to make sure you're staying up to date on our latest training videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications.